Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna do a quick unboxing of the Google Pixel 2 XL. First things first, let's go through the specs real quick. Starting with the most important spec, the price. Now this phone is available in two different versions. You got 64 gigs or 128 gigs. If you get the 64 gig version, that one's gonna run you 850 plus tax, you're looking at 924 bucks. Now if you get the 128 gig version, that one's gonna run you 950 plus tax, you're looking at over a thousand bucks. Now the phone comes in two colors, black or black and white. Now you get a six inch POLED display with a resolution of 1440 by 2880. That's 538 for the PPI Patrol. Now the phone features Corning Gorilla Glass 5 and you got the 18 by nine aspect ratio. Now the phone is IP67 dust and water resistant. It's running Android 8.0 Oreo, fresh out of the box. You got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 processor with the Adreno 540 GPU. Now you get four gigs of RAM and either 64 or 128 gigs of storage, no micro SD card slot for expandable memory. Now you got a 3,520 milliamp non-removable battery that does feature quick charge. On the cameras, you got a 12 megapixel camera on the rear, that's f1.8 with optical image stabilization. And on the front, you got an eight megapixel camera, that's f2.4 with portrait mode software included. Now you also got an always on display, fingerprint sensor, dual front facing speakers, and my favorite feature, the invisible headphone jack. So let's test that out. All right, so here we go. Now, first things first, you're gonna get this card, use Project Fee. So this is a Project Fee capable phone. We'll play with that later. Here we go, shout out to White Shoes back in the building. Google Pixel 2 XL. Nice looking box, Team Pixel. Y'all know I like a nice box. Let's grab a little unboxing knife. Rah, here we go. Okay, now this phone might be White Shoes approved because she's already up in the box. Here goes the phone. Let's see what else you get. Zerks, back up a little bit. <laughs> okay. Nice looking presentation. Here's your SIM ejection tool. Usual books and shit. Pluck them, file them to the side. Here's your OTG. This way you can transfer data from other phones. Okay, real nice. Very Apple-less style packing. Now here we go. This is for your invisible headphone jack. This is a USB Type-C to 3.5 adapter. All right, Zerks, back up. And this is gonna be micro U uh, USB Type-C charging cable. All right, Zerks, you wanna rock that? Go ahead. And this is gonna be your USB Type-C charging brick. Now, here's the phone. Rock. Fresh out of the box. Feels good in the hands, ladies. You know the procedures. It looks similar to the Pixel XL, the original. With that same uh, two-tone back, glass, <laughs> and your, uh, matte <laughs> your matte fingerprint material, matte fingerprint proof material. But if you notice on both phones, no dual cameras. So right out of the gate, there's a couple of things missing for this phone, especially for that hefty price tag. No wireless charge. Zerks just got the OTG. Guys, Zerks go crazy with that because I don't need that. No wireless charge, no headphone jack, no dual camera setup, no SD card. The list is growing already, but you got the front facing speakers. Let's see on one side, here's your power button. Let's see if we got any juice. All right, so here's your power. Oh, that screen looks nice. Now, right away, I know everybody's gonna ask me about that blue tint, and you can see this fresh. Soon as you pull this phone out, that blue tint is gonna hit you right in the face. Now, I was a little con uh, concerned with that. I never like to watch videos and make my decisions based on what other people say, but seeing it in person, that blue tint is heavy. Now, I'll turn up the max brightness and see if that makes a difference, but we'll see. All right, so here's your volume up and down, your SIM tray, your mic, your camera, fingerprint sensor, embedded into the material, I like that. Little Google branding, USB Type-C on the bottom, and that's pretty much it. All right, so let me drop my information in. Uh, we'll play with it for a minute, and then we'll go through the software. We'll test out the speakers, test out the camera, and see what it is, and see if we can get rid of that blue tint. Talk amongst yourselves. All right, y'all, so we back in. 
Now, I just put my information in the phone. I got everything all set up, and I got to be 100% honest with y'all. This phone is a major go, but there's definitely some things that I don't like. Now, is this the smoothest Android phone out right now? The answer is yes. Is this the most feature-packed Android phone? The answer is no. Now, when I do the full review, I'll go into all of the details of everything that I don't like a little bit deeper. But right now, I'll just tell y'all a couple of things that I came across after using the phone for about an hour. Number one, no headphone jack. Now, y'all know my motto. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So on your original Pixel, you had the headphone jack. Why get rid of it? Now, I got a lot of high-fidelity headphones that are wired, and I like to use the aux cable in the car, so having a headphone jack is important to me and not having to carry around a little adapter. Next, no wireless charge. Now, anybody that's seen any of my live streams, you've seen my desktop setups, no wires allowed. So for me, that's kind of a big deal. It just looks better on your nice desktop setups. And I spent too much money already on wireless chargers, so I would have liked to have that feature. Now, keep in mind, you're paying almost a thousand bucks on this phone. It should have all of the features. Next, no facial unlock. Now, some people are gonna say that's gimmicky. Some people don't use that at all. But me, I work out a lot, so my hands are sweaty when you're cooking and you got that fried chicken grease on your hands. It's a little bit more convenient having a facial unlock. Now, Samsung is killing it with the iris sensor because that works in the daytime and in the evening. The LG V30 is doing it big with the facial, but Pixel XL, no facial unlock. Next, the always on display. Now, I'm happy that the phone does have an always on display, but it's not a functional always on display. You're just getting the time, you're getting the date, and you're getting your, uh, your app notifications. But you can't interact with it. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. Now, you see on my Galaxy Note, if I double tap, now I can swipe over. There's my next alarm, swipe over again. There's all my calendar appointments, swipe over again. That's my last uh, video I was watching. I can just start playing it right from there. Fully customizable and fully functional. Same thing with the LG V30. Right from the, see now that facial unlock is crazy. Right from, let me not look at it. Right from the lock screen, always on display. I can go to my music controls, all of my toggles, and I got all my app notifications. And again, fully customizable. I like to have a picture on my always on display. No customization. Now, speaking of customization, that's another thing I don't like about this phone, the lack of customization. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, this is a big deal for me. This is your home screen. If you notice on the top, you can't move this. Uh, you can't move the date and the time and the weather. And you can't move the Google bar at the bottom. So you notice this is the only phone you see that doesn't have my standard home screen setup with the beautiful widgets clock. That's how I like to have mine. I like to have the Google bar either in the middle or on the top. So I don't like the fact that they don't let you move it. And here's another thing. All right, if you swipe in and you try to, let's try to make a different home page as your first page, you can't do it. So this is your, your this is your stock home page. You're gonna have to download a different launcher if you wanna get rid of that. All right, so I don't like that. Next, now this is the biggest problem with this phone, the display. Now, I was kind of skeptical. I thought it was a lot of internet hype, bandwagon hype, but I gotta keep it real. That blue tint is so obvious on this. Now, not the biggest deal in the world because when you're holding a phone like this straight up, I don't know what kind of camera angle you can see right now, but when you're holding a phone like a regular person and you're just looking at it, you're not gonna see it. The display is gonna look beautiful. But the more you start to tilt the phone, here comes that blue tint. Now, I don't know anybody that holds a phone like this, so that's probably not gonna be the biggest deal in the world. But again, for almost a thousand bucks, we can't be making excuses for Google. You shouldn't have any screen issue problems at all. All right, so I don't know if they're gonna do a recall on these. I don't know what, maybe they'll do a uh, Samsung Galaxy, come through with a discount or something on the next phone, but that blue tint is definitely visible. Now I got the phone on max brightness. All right, <laughs> hold on, pull up my, my slide. I got the phone on max brightness and you could clearly see it. All right, so I thought if I put it on max brightness, it would be a little bit less evident. I already went to settings, put on the vivid colors, try to, you know, try to tweak the display settings. You can't get rid of it. But not the biggest deal in the world. Now, like I was saying, after using the phone for about an hour, there's some things that I do like. So let's talk about those now. Number one, the build quality. 
Now this phone is definitely not gonna win any awards for the sexiest phone of the year, but it does have a premium build to it. It feels so good in the hands, ladies. You know the procedures. And it has a nice heavy weight to it. Now that was one of the things that I didn't like about the LG V30. Even though this one has a premium build to it, it just feels a little bit too light and that kind of gives it a cheapy feel. So this one has a nice heavy, heavy feel to it. So it definitely feels premium and it feels like it's worth that heavy price tag. Next, fingerprint sensor. Now I do like the location, even though I prefer them on the front, but you got the dual speakers, so you gotta put it on the back. At least they put it a little bit lower as opposed to the Galaxy Note when it's all the way on the top. So this one is a lot easier to reach and the fingerprint sensor works 100% of the time. No lag, no hiccups. One of the best on the market. Next, always on display. Now, even though it's not the fully functional always on display, it isn't always on display, and I'd rather have some always on display than no always on display. So you got other phones like the Essential Trash. If you had this phone on your dock, you would never know what time it was unless you picked up the phone or you got a notification. So now, when you have an always on display, if you got your phone on a nice desktop dock, all you gotta do is glance over, you can see the time, the date, and all your notifications. So I do like that. Next, the actual phone display. Now, minus the blue tint, Look, and on a side note, if nobody told you about the blue tint, you probably wouldn't even notice because you're only going to see it when you hold the phone like this. Now, I never hold my phone like this. I always hold it right in front of me. So take that with a grain of salt. The actual display, when you're holding it the correct way, it looks beautiful. Now, look at the blacks on this. You can barely see the bezels. The colors are nice and vibrant. The display is awesome. <laughs> it's just straight up awesome. Now, if they can fix that blue tint problem, People won't have anything to complain about, but it is what it is. Next, the front facing speakers. Now these are the best speakers that you're gonna find on an Android phone, but my gripe with that is, they could have been a little bit louder since you got dual front facing speakers, because I did a side by side test, and I'll do it again when I do the full review, versus the iPhone 8 Plus, and honestly, I'm keeping it real with y'all, the iPhone 8 Plus almost sounds a little bit better. Now these have more of a deeper sound to it, a little bit more bass, but the iPhone is balanced and it's a little bit louder, just a teeny bit. I did a little, I'll do a full test. It's hard to do tests like that from behind the camera though because the mic's not gonna really pick it up, but you gotta take my word for it. But going from Android phones, these are the best speakers you're gonna find on any Android phone out right now. Let me do a little test. Let me pull up Bike Life. And we can check out the display at the same time. Now, there's another problem with this phone. Hold up, I gotta mention that. Speaking of displays. Now, you notice you got your black bars because it's the 18 by nine aspect ratio, but you don't have that little button like Samsung phones have where you can stretch it out to fill, uh, fill the whole screen. So you're gonna still get your black bars when you're holding the phone like this, watching YouTube videos. But listen to them speakers though. I'll put it closer to the mic. Speakers on this major major go now for me that might be worth the price of the phone alone because i've been crying about dual speaker phones for the longest i like the way they look and i like the way they sound the display looked beautiful too just now next the squeeze factor now y'all remember the htc u11 you got the squeeze factor well now you got the squeeze factor on this phone what time is it it's 8 33 now the problem is that you can only have uh, your squeeze factor activate your Google Assistant. Now, hopefully with an update, they'll let you squeeze it and do other stuff. Like one of my favorite features with the squeeze factor on the HTC U11 is squeezing it and turning on my flashlight. That's a major key for me. But right now you can only squeeze it and do your Google Assistant, but it works with the display off. What's the weather for today? Okay, so you got your voice commands. Okay, Google. Who won the Knicks game? The Knicks' most recent game was against the Celtics. The score was 110 to 89 Celtics. All right, so I'm going to have to get used to hearing that. It is what it is. Now, one of the best features about this phone is the camera. Now, there's a downside. I'll show you that real quick. There's no pro mode. All right, so if you're heavy into photography and you like to change all the pro settings, no pro mode. But this is a nice point-and-shoot style camera. Now, let's go through some of the different modes. You got slow motion, panorama, photosphere, portrait mode and settings and let me tell you something the portrait mode on this phone is crazy look at this picture 
Now, there's no dual camera setup, so it's the computer software that's gonna blur out the background for you, but it does it flawlessly. Now you can hit portrait settings and you can play around with the settings even more, but the camera on this phone, this might be one of the best. This looks just like one of my iPhone 8 portrait mode photos. Let's go back. Now you got different settings, you got your timer, you got your grid. You can change from auto to cloudy, sunny, fluorescent, and you got your flash on and off. And of course you can brighten or decrease the light inside of the picture. When you reverse to your front facing camera, you also got portrait mode also. So that's a major, major go. Next, the software, Android 8, Android Optimus Prime, so far it's running super smooth. And that's why I said this might be the smoothest phone out right now. Look how many apps I got open in the background at the same time. I was trying to get this phone to lag and no lag. So if it's anything like last year's Pixel, you're not going to have to worry about resetting the phone every day. No lag, no hiccups at all. Beautiful. So basically, like I said, fresh out of the box, this is a major go. No bells and whistles, a lot of stuff missing. Hit me up in the comments and let me know what y'all want me to cover when I do the full review. But y'all know my dislike list is going to be pretty long. Is this phone worth the price? I would say yes, only because it's super smooth, no lag, has a beautiful build quality. If you could get past that little uh, bluish tint, don't worry about that. You got dual speakers. And you got Project uh, Project Fi or Fi, whatever you want to call it. You got your Google integration. You got Google Lens. There's a lot of stuff we'll talk about when I do the full review. Anyway, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this one. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know, stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready, no meat boys allowed. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat. Flossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad. I see y'all in the comment section early. Hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing. I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Spock, one to beam up. Energize.